I've been, I've been teaching uh, in, in person since uh, fall, and I haven't seen a face since then, so it's actually kind of interesting to see faces. Um, and you guys all look like you do, so that's good. Um, so what I want to do is uh, just give a little bit of an account of why we care about this, and, uh, and then try to give you an account of what we have found. Um, so social justice ideology uh, is, you know, has a, there's a lot of different names that go along with it. Uh, but we really believe that uh, this particular way of thinking stigmatizes or bans most things that are good about America. It stigmatizes the very idea that our laws are colorblind and should be colorblind as itself a racist thing. It stigmatizes the idea that hiring and student achievement should be measured on the basis of merit as itself a racist or institutionally racist thing. So the things that, that we want uh, as a people to freely associate with one another, to celebrate achievement, to have laws that provide equal protection to all the citizens, they're stigmatized or banned. And insofar as our educational uh, institutions go about reinforcing those ideas that they, these are bad things or themselves you know, just dis diabolical things, they are preparing the next generation to undermine what's great about the country. And uh, we know uh, from, you know, from looking at, looking at uh, curricula from all around the country, both K through 12 and in higher education, that all of these institutions are building up and educating children to hate what is great about the country. And the country cannot survive that. And so uh, now we don't get into all those details in the report because our goal is to discover how far this ideology has penetrated into um, all of uh, Idaho's higher educational institutions. We've started with Boise State where I happen to be employed. And, um, but I have other jobs too. So. And I'm um, a father and all. And, uh, and uh, but we're also going to be going uh, on to do reports on the University of Idaho, which is nearly done, and then the other four-year institutions. And the hope is that we'll also be able to reproduce at least something like this when it comes to K through 12 education. It's a more difficult endeavor. But we need to know how far this ideology has penetrated our academic institutions because that is where our kids are educated on these lessons of civics. And uh, now there's choice. There's choice in higher education, unlike in K through 12. You can go to one university or a different university. But if all of the universities kind of have monopolized this particular ideology, there's no escape. And, uh, and that means this ideology has a monopoly on our students' future. If they want to be an engineer, they have to go through an institution that emphasizes this. If they want to be a nurse, they have to go through an institution that emphasizes this. And, uh, and that is like a frightening prospect for the future of the country. Even the most technical degrees require an indoctrination in this particular thing. So, uh, so we, we set about asking the question, in, you know, informed by that, by that analysis, we asked the question, how far has social, ide uh, social justice ideology penetrated Boise State University. And, uh, and then we wrote this handsome report. There's even some poetic prose in here, I think, um, and, uh, 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 about that particular question. And, uh, and, and, you know, and I, think, I think it's important to like, put this all in perspective, OK? There's, uh, there's different ways or different kinds of cultures that you can find on university campuses. There are very bureaucratic cultures who build up a big infrastructure where they have people hired to oversee diversity and inclusion issues uh, in every college, and then at, at, the, at the high administration level first, and then in every college, and then in every department. So you get a place like Ohio State University, they have over 100 employees who are dedicated to diversity and inclusion because they've built out that infrastructure. And then, but you can also look at places like Evergreen State, where they don't have uh, a big infrastructure at Evergreen State, but it's, it's filled with fanatics, 
write about this, and they'll have days where all the white people are supposed to get off campus to so that, and, and, and that's because there's a fervor on the campus. Now, the same fervor doesn't exist at Ohio State where they have this big infrastructure, but the same infrastructure doesn't exist where they have this big fervor at Evergreen State. So how do you make judgments about where universities are when it comes to social justice ideology? We've looked at certain indicators, um, and we, we break out the indicators into two broad categories. The first category is what do the administrators plan to do? What do they tell us their mission is? And what policies have they adopted to achieve those missional uh, goals? And in the case of Boise State, where we have, we're complete with the, uh, with the report, uh, we can say that uh, in 2017, then President Kustra put together a commission on diversity and inclusion, uh, who, and they made it a goal for the university to uh, transform Idaho's personal and cultural you know, attributes and, and transform it into a more welcoming one, as if what, belonged before, what was there before wasn't welcoming. And, uh, and then they began a hiring process and policies that were designed to achieve those particular goals. They hired a diversity and inclusion uh, director. They created a student council. Um, and there's been fruits from this. Uh, from this effort uh, over the last few years. Uh, the, the, we know a few things. For instance, that the, uh, the Boise Police Department's contract with the university has not been renewed. And for the year gap year where they continued it, uh, they have to take implicit bias training as if the policemen are like in themselves arresting people on the basis of race or national origin or something like that. And, uh, but then they've severed the contract with Boise Police Department. That's not abolishing the police, but you know, it's getting them off campus. And uh, they've, uh, there's been conflict uh, between uh, the, the coffee shop on campus that had a small thin blue line flag. They were encouraged to leave. Uh, it, it appears that they were not physically kicked off campus, but uh, they were definitely discouraged from staying. And uh, as a new business, I think we can all sympathize with them being in a very tough uh, situation in that uh, point. There's also implicit bias training that you have to have in order to serve on committees. All of this stuff is publicly available. There's also each of the colleges has adopted at least a shared value statement about diversity, inclusion, and uh, equity. And, uh, and showing that it's going to be part of their program going forward. They will be judged by accreditors on the basis of whether or not they have achieved those goals. And then when, they, when the accreditors show that they haven't, then they're going to have to up the hiring. And the cycle will, hap will, will start and will become like Ohio State. right? And uh, that's the way of, uh, of the world on these things. So as I say, one of the things we looked at uh, was the administrative plans. Another thing that we looked at uh, in this handsome report was the uh, student life and curriculum. Uh, how, how far has this ideology uh, penetrated into what the student experience is like on the campus? One thing we found that was very interesting and somewhat unexpected is that the residence departments, the residence halls are just totally taken over by people who push this. So all of the programming that you get in residence halls are run by people with the aim of promoting this particular kind of supposedly welcoming culture. But, uh, and we've also, and I think this is a unique thing in what we did, is put together a way of judging departments and classes uh, to see how many of them are by, informed by this ideology. So we imagine what it's like to be an undergraduate. You're, you're here at the beginning of your, your, uh, your journey through college. You have to go through general ed, and then you go through your departments. How much of the general ed is captured by social justice ideology? How many departments are captured by social justice ideology? And we found that there are very many trigger points within the path that students take through the general ed where they have no choice but to take a class that is infused with social justice ideology. The only class that's required at Boise State of all the students, well, that's not the only one. One of the four classes uh, that is required by all students at Boise State is UF 200. It's where diversity lives, as Boise State says. 
There is no class at Boise State that is required by all students that requires knowledge of American history, knowledge of American literature, knowledge of civics, or any appreciation for the West. But there is a class dedicated to you know, showing why it's bad. How can a country survive when it funds such things that a bullet or a gun pointed at its own head? There are departments that are totally infused by this. If you're getting into sociology, like don't expect your kid to come back and love you. Right? And, uh, and there are other, uh, we identified seven uh, departments who from their mission statements, from their program learning outcome statements, from their own required courses, show that they are captured by social justice ideology. All of this stuff is available on the internet. The virtue of this particular report is we organize everything about this topic into categories so you can see where the problems are or where, the, as you go through the journey, where the social justice obstacles are for the particular student. And um, there's not much interpretation. <laughs> Uh, the only interpretation would be like when we categorize you as red, which is captured, yellow, which is developing, and green, which is like it's not present. So um, the conclusion that we draw is at Boise State, the social justice ideology is in its infancy, it's past its infancy and headed toward adolescence. What that means is we have goals at that university. We haven't yet fully funded those goals. We've announced the intention to do things, but we haven't yet done those things. Many, many departments and classes are aiming to build this particular uh, ideology, but not all of them have accomplished it. I would expect, if, when we do the next report in three years, if that's our, if, if that's our time frame, uh, that it'll be adolescence. And then if you wait three more years, it'll be uh, you know, fully grown man ready to reproduce. And uh, in a decade, it'll be an old, worn down man like me. So, um, so anyways, that, uh, so we think it's like a very important issue. And we think that uh, it's still not big enough at Boise State that it couldn't be crushed with, uh, with proper regulation, oversight, and levers used. Now, I'm gonna bring up my co-conspirator here, Anna Miller, to talk a little bit about the policy recommendations and uh, some of the things we're doing going forward. 